Hello, my friends. Hello, you guys. So we're going to check in on Laura, where she is, where she's headed, what she's done. Naughty girl. She's very naughty. Yes, yes, most definitely. And I hope everybody's okay with us trying to lighten things a little bit every now and then. Uh, most definitely a very, very serious storm. And as you're going to see, a you know, record setter again. We had a lot of those. So the barometric pressure is still at 991. Uh, this was a powerful storm. It's now a tropical storm. And it's going towards the north northeast at 15 miles an hour. Winds are at 50 miles per hour currently. So we have tropical storm force winds, especially in gusts, are going to continue near the center of Laura over portions of extreme northern Louisiana and Arkansas this evening. Flash flooding along small streams, urban areas, and roadways will continue across portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas. Additional rainfall will also lead to minor to moderate freshwater river flooding. The heavy rainfall and threat and flash and urban flooding potential will spread northeastern into middle Mississippi, lower Ohio, and Tennessee valleys, as well as the mid-Atlantic states Friday and Saturday. There are uh, There is the possibility of some tornadoes as well this evening across central and eastern Arkansas into Mississippi. The risk for tornadoes should redevelop Friday afternoon and evening across parts of the Mid-South and Tennessee Valley regions. So we can see some of the damage that is done, aerial, these aerial views. This is outside of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and the storm made landfall near the Texas-Louisiana border as predicted. As a Category 4 with 150 mile an hour winds, Category 5 is 156. So pretty close to a cat Category 5 storm. Uh, a lot of destruction as you can see here. And of course we're going to pray for those people that have lost their homes. There's so many people across the world that have lost their homes in these times through flooding, fires, tornadoes, hurricanes, landslides. Um, you know, we could add probably more to the list and, you know, thankfully not too many for, uh, meteors and fireballs so far. Yeah. But, you know, we're heading into September and that, that was one of the buzzes for September as we, you know, we're going to take a peek here and see an aerial view of some of the flooding going on. Now let's hope we, uh, get a break. And there's nothing that develops soon. We'll have to keep our eyes open, but boy, that's a lot of water. It is. I mean, look at it. It's just miles and miles and miles. It's endless. And, you know, we have seen this, again, in so many places. And there's always other complications. There's a chemical fire that erupted at a manufacturing plant in Westlake, Louisiana. Re the residents were warned to stay inside closed doors and turn off air conditioning, describing the fire as a hazardous material incident. And look at that plume of hazardous materials going up into the air. Oh my gosh, that just feels demonic. And as we said uh, about the chemical plant, but we look at all these power lines down. Wow. That's a mess. This is going to take uh, quite a bit of cleanup. And, you know, thankful for all the first responders that go and work in things like this. And uh, I would venture to guess my friend Thor, uh, he might be listening if he's out there helping with this one as well. He always goes out and helps all the time. He's a first responder. As we look at what the damage was being done here to these buildings, Yeah, you don't want to be outside in that. You know, you get some sheet metal that comes off and could do horrible damage. As well as other things just blowing around out there. So, many skyscrapers damaged. You see, this is downtown Lake Charles. Some of the buildings may be a total loss. Many roofs off of many different houses and structures as well. Before and after pics, this is of a Doppler radar. That was a direct hit there. And a woman found a llama wandering around. 
interesting. And so she's walking the llama to safety. <laughs> I love llamas. Isn't that cute? It is. It is. I want to touch a llama. I know. I like the llama. <laughs> she's having fun. <laughs> So a few weeks ago, residents of Lake Charles were demanding that a Confederate monument at the city courthouse be removed. The proposal was rejected. Um, Mother Nature took care of it. Yep. There you go, Mother Nature. Communications tower. That's twisted. So landfall came with 150 mile an hour winds. You had up to 7 inches of rain that can fall through central and eastern Arkansas. You know, every time we talked about Arkansas, like, you know, because we, we've watched a lot of videos in Arkansas, and we really like what we see from the nature standpoint. I mean, it's, 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 I don't know if people realize how beautiful Arkansas really is as far as the state. It is stunning. It's absolutely breathtaking. So, you know, we've, we've thought about, because the property there is very, very inexpensive. But the one thing that keeps coming up with Cindy is she sees water there. I do. Everywhere I look in Arkansas, I keep seeing water show up right in the middle of wherever we're at. And, yeah. So it is thought, you know, the Ozarks are thought to be one of the safe places. And, you know, the three that we talk about the most in the U.S. Um, is the Appalachian Mountain area, and then the Ozarks, and then the Four Corners area, as far as being safe zones. There's other places uh, people, you know, might want to consider as well. Every place has its issues. You know, if you look at a lot of the maps, um, you know, some areas of Wisconsin, uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan might be okay, might be good. It's going to be very cold. Uh, same thing if, if you're looking at New Hampshire and Vermont or parts of Maine, might be really, really good uh, and safe as well. But again, very, very cold. And when, when does the switch flip? If the switch does flip, you know, grand solar minimum people believe that we will ultimately be heading into a very very cold period and we do see that after every period of global warming there's always this drop off that happens and so when does that happen that's the question uh, yeah many people have said also look at Canada look at all that wilderness so far away from people I mean there's there's very few people per square mile in Canada so Canada might be a good option to escape from the chaos because we see chaos in the cities everywhere uh, well, no, I shouldn't say cities everywhere, but in so many areas. But then again, you know, the challenging cold as well, and then the, the shorter growing season. Every area has its issues, and, um, you know, that's basically the bottom line. So how strong was it? Well, we see it was tie, tie for the most intense, tie for the strongest landfall on record in Louisiana. So 150 mile an hour winds. The last time was 1856. Uh, and the storm's name was Last Island. Had slightly lower pressure, but the same wind speed. So this was a, as strong a storm basically that's ever hit uh, Louisiana as far as the wind speed. Yeah, that's pretty incredible, really. So don't forget about the wildfires. And you see here, California is confronting a once in a generation fire season. But didn't we say that last year? Didn't we say that the year before? And scientists predict that it's only going to grow in size and cost in the next 50 years. So this is their projection through 2041 to 70. Wow. You know, I mean, just you can see the ramping up of everything. I wonder, you know, if I ask people, what do you think the world's going to look like in 2070? And how many people do you think are living on the planet in 2070? I look forward to seeing the answers to that. So this is from FEMA Region 10. During a wildfire, smoke can make the outdoor air unhealthy to breathe. Local officials may advise you to stay indoors. Here's some helpful information. There's a link there as well. Yeah, well, in these days, everybody's wearing a, a you know, N95 mask anyway, right? Or, or a bandana or something. Um... But most definitely, the unhealthy air is an issue. And here you see Colorado officials are recommending people construct a safe room in their house using a portable air filtering system where they should spend most of their time to avoid the horrible air quality. And this is talking about air quality in Denver has deteriorated as residents are barraged with infusions of multiple lung-irritating pollutants. Oh my gosh, that's really 
Horrible. And the wildfire and medical lake burning, more than 40 acres right now. It's by Highway 902 on Bartholomew Road. And there's, like last night, there was 50 new wildfires that sprung up in California alone. And here you see, uh, okay, Team Fairchild confirms its survival school has been evacuated. It's asking anyone else on base to avoid the area. Fire has breached the survival school building on the south side of the base. There's so many individual fires burning. It's just kind of crazy. And though, as we see here, while Hurricane Laura makes many headlines across the world, days of intense monsoon rain have caused devastating flooding in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Over 100 people have lost their lives. People are still missing, unaccounted for. Obviously, a ton of people are going to be also homeless from this situation. And ongoing still in China and India as well. And then we have Typhoon Babi making landfall. This is in North Korea. And this one had sustained winds of about 75 miles an hour. It's the strongest storm to hit the Korean Peninsula so far this year. And the eighth named storm of the 2020 uh, Pacific Typhoon season. There's videos there as well for you guys to check out. And here you go, another road. It's just kind of gone there. Uh, shipwreck vegetation, yeah. Climate change, yeah. There's climate change, that's for sure. Is it? Is it all due to our cars? No. There's a lot more going on than that. So it equals peatland, peatland landslide, habitat destruction, carbon release, infrastructural damage, and economic costs to the taxpayer. And so, this is in Northern Ireland, by the way. Another landslide. We had tons of them. And we have a mud volcano erupting in Indonesia. Four people were poisoned from the gases. Nineteen buffaloes are missing. And when you watch this video, and uh, I avoid playing these because it got hit before with, like, watchers and uh, strange sounds, some of the links bringing up copyright issues. Um, yeah, I don't know why the people are, like, going forward and then going back it, it's yeah we saw was it in guatemala yeah i think it was fuego when it erupted people were just way too casual you know it's like just get to safety um and this is the obvious bread prices food in general are going to rise i forget what the name of that congressman was there was a congressman that was addressing steve mnuchin and saying, um, was it Scott, I think, Congressman Scott? Steve, um, Steve Benoon was talking about Israeli News Live, one of his last videos. Um, was It was interesting because the congressman's like, why are we not spending more money? Why are you not asking for more money to help with the food situation with all the crop loss going on? They're asking for money for this, for that. They always ask for money for the military. What about feeding people? And he was really just kind of flabbergasted. Yeah, he almost couldn't get the words out because he was so flabbergasted and just so perplexed. They they shut off his microphone. Yeah, they shut off his microphone on him. You know, he was he was just taking a, a breath and about to speak again. They they're like, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, next, please, next, next. Yeah, we don't want to talk about this anymore because then it gets into the real issue. And, you know, this is a perfect storm that is a little too perfect, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, that was a really nasty trick that they did. He was just bringing up valid points. It's horrible. Yeah. You know, when you look at the amount that's sped, that's sped, because <laughs> I'm thinking about spend and fed. <laughs> I'm going to make a new word. <laughs> when, you, when you think about it, I mean, seriously, look at, look at President Trump's discretionary budget. And it will leave you scratching your head. And I, I wish more people would actually look at these things. You know, because you know, the defense bu budget just dwarfs what we spend on making sure people are going to be fed. Because that's going to be an issue. That's going to be a real issue. And then we'll have riots on the street, not over other things. But it'll be over the fact that there's no food. And uh, th that's what's coming shortly. Bread prices are going to rise after extreme weather causes UK's worst wheat harvest in 40 years. And we were just talking about um, Iowa's harvest yesterday. 
because of the Durate show. And uh, it, all this is adding up. It's just adding up drastically. And a year from now, it's going to be a totally different world as far as the situation. And we see they unearthed over here in South Dakota a 3,000-pound triceratops, as you see the skull. There's so much, I think, that we're missing from the dinosaur picture. Well, yeah, you know, it makes me wonder. These creatures had to have been way smarter than we give them credit for, I feel. Yeah, we always want to say marble-sized brain, you know, and no intelligence, but you never know. And how did they get here, anyway? Uh, did they really develop naturally? Uh, you know, or is this plant a little bit of a, an experiment? I, I did a video a while ago, and it was showing uh, on the cover in the ant farm. And, you know, basically the, the title was, you know, are we living in an alien ant farm? When you think about it, the different types of life here, the, uh, the different races, um, it's really interesting, all the different uh, species of hominids that just stop. It's all fascinating to look at. So this is in the Badlands of South Dakota. And, uh, you know, was it just a random asteroid that killed the dinosaurs? Or, or did somebody say, yeah, this experiment's happened long enough. Let's just, you know, let's start over. Let's, let's try mammals this time. Let's see what we can do with primates. Yeah, yeah it, just, it just feels like, it's like that's what's going on over and over and over. So we have 25 wild edibles you may find in a city. It depends on your climate as, as well. So uh, some things that you might not think of as food, but they are food in a survival situation like acorns. We, we talked about making acorn flour the other day. Amaranth has a lot of health benefits as well. Uh, blackberries. Burdock. I remember as a kid uh, picking blackberries. My aunt had couple of trees or bushes and just loaded with blackberries um we have burdock cattail i mean we used to burn those things as kids i don't know why but yeah they are actually edible pretty pretty wild this the cent center of the central stalk is tender and edible in early spring could, could be used as a vegetable the indians used to utilize them the native americans chickweed dandelion Fairy ring mushrooms, and make sure you know your mushrooms. Your mushrooms could get us in trouble. Hazelnuts, Japanese knotweed, mulberries. We also use that mulberry trees in Connecticut. Mustard, pecans, plantain, and prickly pear cactus, which I do enjoy those. Raspberry trees, we had, uh, we had a lot of the raspberry, well, more bushes growing wild in Ohio. So we also have roses, and you wouldn't think of that as well. Rose water is, is, is really, uh, it has a distinct flavor, and it's used in some desserts in India. Yeah, I mean, it's just beautiful all over the place. Salmonberry, that's an interesting one as well. And then we have shaggy mane mushrooms, sheep sorrel, stinging nettle, seeing a ton of that out there. Violets, not necessarily in, in the desert, but <laughs> uh, you could eat violets as well, walnuts as well, obviously. Wild carrots, ours didn't do anything this year. Uh, yarrow, so there's a lot of things you could eat in a, you know, in a survival situation. You know, and just for kicks, you know, your house plants. what kind of house plants do you have? If you had to eat them, are they safe to eat? Yeah, that's another thing to think at think about so if you guys haven't checked it out come check out evolutionaryenergyarts.com the website anybody that wants to schedule an appointment just leave us a email at evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com or e-a-r-t-s at protonmail.com and i want to thank you for your support on ko-fi and patreon because you guys have kept us going and able to make videos in these times as always guys god bless and namaste namaste